We want to use reviews, these five-star reviews that you see, we want them to reflect the testimonies of your church. Now, why do we want to use reviews to share our testimonies? Okay, first, let me, let me talk to you a little bit about the psychology of how people make decisions in choosing a church. It's honestly very similar to the way that we make any decision in our lives. And this could be big decisions like what home to buy or what car to purchase or even where to live what job to pursue. We even do this with tiny decisions like what am I going to drink in the next 24 hours or what am I going to buy at the grocery store? What restaurant are we going to go to? Okay. There is power in reviews because of this simple fact. People will believe what they hear others say about you, but they won't necessarily hear what you say about yourself. Or I can flip that. People will hear what you say about yourself, but they'll believe what others say about you. I like that one better, okay? We call this social proof. Uh, I don't remember if this is a marketing term or if it started as a psychological term, but we've all seen this live it out in our own relationships, okay? You've probably told your spouse or even a friend, you've probably mentioned something to them. This restaurant I want to go to, this product I want to try, this subscription I want to try, uh, this gym I want to try, uh, whatever it is, you've probably said something and they were like, oh, that's nice. You know, maybe, maybe we'll try it later or, you know, oh, that's good. It's nice for you, but I don't know if that's for me. And then they hear about it from someone else and they're like, oh, Steve just told me about this amazing thing. I just tried it. It's awesome. And you're like, I've been telling you to try that for years. Why didn't you listen to me? My wife is a pro at that. Love her to death. I'll tell her, hey, we should try this. We should try this. You should try this. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just white noise. But a friend, her best friend or a colleague says it's working. She goes out and buys 10 cases of it. And I'm like, ah, well, we could have been doing this a year ago. She's a pro at it. And I love her for it. So this social proof is, you know, we can hear what we say about ourselves. Hey, I want this. Okay, well, yeah, you want it. So, of course, you're going to say it's good for us. But if she hears it from someone else, a third party who's often seen more objectively, then we believe it and we're more likely, when I say we, I mean humans, we're more likely to, to act upon that. It's the power of testimony. Just, it's why when you watch infomercials, it's not just the chop, chop, chop guy talking. It also goes to professional chefs. It goes to stay-at-home moms. It goes to moms of families of eight. It goes to food kitchen volunteers saying, this changed our lives. And you may remember the chop, chop, chop guy, but what's going to convince you to call that number and order a chopper and get a get one free with all the accessories and then buy all the upsells is the testimonies of those other people because you're not like the chop chop guy. Okay, I'm sure everyone's screaming in their in their phone right now because they know his name and I don't. Uh, but you're going to remember because, hey, I do cook a lot in the kitchen or I do have a big family or I do hate cutting myself when I'm trying to chop. I can't chop garlic for the life of me. I need that chopper. Yeah, I need me that chopper. So we use this in marketing. There's no reason we can't take advantage of this as the church and position our, uh, uh, what others are saying about us as a way to convince, compel, or persuade someone that our church is not only worth paying attention, it's worth coming to. And not only that, uh, testimonies take it a step further to say, you know, Jesus wasn't just a person that walked the earth and said some nice things. He's an actual life changing creator. Uh, that is a redeemer like no other, if that makes sense. So we want to share these reviews at a time when people are most likely to listen, to act upon them, to take them to heart and, and really make a decision based on them. And that's when people are searching for churches. Okay. Um, but reviews, like I said, to, to finish this off with reviews before we go into actually using them for your church, reviews show that people like you or people like me use the product, and if they like it, then I'll probably like it. It's why we often, you know, the best ways to share our, uh, Jesus are through our own testimonies. I'm realizing I'm a little tall, short on the camera. I'm going to tilt it down just a bit. There we go. Um, it, the, the, the reviews show that if this person liked it and I'm like this person, then I must like it. Okay. And so if Jesus changed this person and this person's my friend because I'm like them, then maybe Jesus can help me, right? The, our, our best ways of sharing the gospel often start with God's work in our life. And then that goes into 
the salvation redeeming aspect of the gospel. And so that's the power of reviews. Now let's talk about what it looks like for the church to use reviews, to call people to her, to make sure that when people feel that pull of God or they're interested in a church to learn more, to work out their relationship with their creator, they're not convinced to go to a wolf in sheep's clothing who says, look at our bright shows, our big kids programs, aren't we so great? We can use our reviews to say, look at Jesus and what he did in our lives and isn't he so great? And you can have that real meaningful, sustainable relationship through our church. 